I'm a suspect. Hanging with the killers in the projects. Tater on the barrel, keep quiet. Catch a nigga slipping from behind. OG, Bobby, Josh. OG, Bobby, Josh. OG, Bobby, Josh. OG, Bobby, Josh. What's up, T Squad? It's me, Keisha, and I am here with my Mega Spill the Tea episode. Sorry if you hear a lawnmower going off. My next door neighbor is cutting their grass. But anywho, we got a bunch of stories to go over today, so let's get into our first one. So, Fallon, the former housewife from the Real Housewives of Atlanta, and Simon Gobadia's ex wife, recently has been teasing a new show that she'll be on and it had us all wondering was she gonna be recasted for season 16 of the real housewives of atlanta let's take a look at what she had to say tea coming for y'all okay i know y'all been waiting for me to say something um and i know y'all gonna keep asking if i don't say something i'm coming i will be coming out here and being messy y'all what we not gonna do? <laughs> um, so tonight I am going to dinner with um, my newest business partners and I can't wait to share the news with you guys um, with what I've been working on. You'll know something within the next 48 hours. I'm really excited to share this news with y'all. Um, it's something that a lot of you have been asking me to do and I finally listened. So like I said, she had everyone wondering, okay, is she going back to the show? She talking about we'll find out in the next 48 hours. She's meeting with her business partners. All of this, that, and the third. Well, she was not lying. She, in fact does have something coming out but it's not her going back to the real housewives of atlanta actually she's coming out with her own dating show yes if you are a man out there maybe even a woman <laughs> and you are looking for love and want to date fallon pina they are doing casting calls right now for her upcoming show falling for fallon yes falling for Fallon, it says, I'm looking for love. Is that you? Uh, 2 p.m. filming will be taking place at Housewives of ATL. She says, casting call attention, all individuals interested in finding love. We are excited to announce the casting for Fallon's latest show, Falling for Fallon, hosted by Fallon. Are you in search of true love? If so, this could be the perfect opportunity for you. The casting will take place on Tuesday, April 9th, 2024 at District 269 Armour Drive, NE, I don't know what that means, Atlanta, Georgia, 30324. Please arrive promptly at 2 p.m. as this will be a filmed event. Remember to dress your best and showcase your true personality. Baby, um, Fallon don't be need don't need to be looking for love. She need to be looking for the first therapist that she can find. Because after she was on couples retreat last season with her baby daddy number, I don't know what. And we found out all the trauma she's gone through in her life and how she just go from man to man to man to man to man. Girl, I hope this is just for a check or a bag or something for more promotion for yourself. Because, girl, you got a lot of inner work that you need to do. A lot of inner work. Like in the last, what, two, three years, you've gone from being married to cheating with your best friend getting divorced, getting pregnant, getting engaged, breaking up with him. And now you're looking for love? Girl, what is wrong? And she is such a gorgeous, beautiful girl. Like, she needs to be casted in the live adapt adaptation of Moana. Like, she is absolutely stunningly beautiful, you know? And it's crazy because some of the most beautiful women in the world have the lowest of self-esteems. And she seems like one of them. Um, this to me is a horrible idea. Hopefully, like I said, it's just for entertainment. She's not serious, but 
knowing Fallon, if she see the right person that spark an interest in her child, she gonna be pregnant again with baby number five, six, seven, eight, nine, child. Who knows? But if you're in the Atlanta area <laughs> and you wanna go, it'll be on the ninth, which is this upcoming week, this Tuesday. So if you go, let me know if you're winning and let me know if you get casted. She looking for love. I wonder what this is going to be on. Like what network? Zeus? <laughs> Ray J, Tron. Has anybody watched Ray J's new um, app, Tron X or whatever it's called? I've been meaning to download it and see what he got going on. I know he got Blueface got a show on there. Um, Sukiana. Him and Princess and some Mo mess. I gotta check it out. But what y'all think about this? Because this does not seem like a very kosher idea to me. Like Fallon needs deep psychological help. God bless her soul, Jesus. Ugh, Lord. So guys, Boosie was <laughs> In the news, as always. I don't think it's a week that goes by where we do not hear something about Boosie Bad. Okay? That man stay in the news for his tomfoolery, for the ignorant stuff that come out of his mouth, for the spit and the white stuff being on the inside of his mouth when he talk, for his idiotic views and everything else. Okay? Um, but recently, as you can see, he was in the news because footage of somebody that was stalking him and came to his house hit the blogs yes we have the actual footage i guess of the young lady being arrested i have not watched this so i'm watching it right along with you guys so let's take a look oh god i'm scared yeah we got a it's not look crazy stalk oh yeah the other day she pulled up, jumped out with two BB guns, talking about she finna spray the house. The day before that, after that, she jumped out again with, with two BB guns and tried to walk up on Tootie. Nigga finna put up. The last week she came again, talking about she we married and I bought her twenty thousand dollar earrings. A month ago, she did some more shit. Now today she come block my driveway off so nobody can't get so nobody can't come through. Talking about she ready to die with her kids in the car. Stalker ass bitch. You trying to nigga now. You trying to nigga now. Oh my god. Bitch can block my driveway off tonight. You know she crazy. Got on socks and in got on socks and heels. You know she crazy. <laughs> You know she crazy. We got on socks and we got on socks and heels. You know she crazy. Lizzie McGuire. You know she crazy. We got on socks. They just walked the kids in the car, bro. Aww. They just put the kids in that car, bro. They need to take them damn kids from her. I adopt them kids. I adopt them kids, man. They need to take them damn kids from her. Wow, that's so sad and crazy. Yeah, you know you crazy when you stalking somebody in the dead of night while it's raining heavy. Like, because black women, we ain't trying to mess about her and get out of her all puffy and mess. We do not like going outside when it's raining. Like, my son literally has an aversion to rain. Like, if it's raining outside, Kyrie's don't even want to take out the trash. Because I don't know if he thinks, like, the raindrops are acid. <laughs> And it's going to do him in or something. I'd be like, dude, it's just water. Take your butt outside and go take out the trash. Like, what is going on here? But, yeah, she crazy. She had on some Lizzie McGuire's, honey, and some socks. Oh, yeah, she was cuckoo for Cocoa Puff. She was the range. And who want to stalk Boosie? Who? Now, I can see Chris Brown. We've seen... Him being stalked. I can even see Usher. I can see Timothy Chalamet. I can even see Joe Biden. <laughs> but Boosie? Ew. 
child, it cracked me up because somebody from all about the T Thomas or was it Smiley? Because <laughs> y'all know. Um, about a month ago, Smiley was accused of stealing like his shirt, his jersey or something at a basketball game, child. Oh my God. I feel bad for her kids. Like you took your kids on a mission like this. You had a pow pow with you, whether it was a BB gun or whatnot. Like your kids were in the car. I know they was like, what is mommy doing? Like what? What was her end result in this? I wonder where the key is taken into like custody and put in like child protective services. Oh, that is truly sad. It really is. It's like funny, but it's not funny because children are involved. Oh, my God. Like, what is wrong with people nowadays? Like, people are insane. Insane. To be pulling up to people's houses. What is wrong with y'all? Like y'all gonna get popped one day playing with folks. You just can't be popping up at people's houses all willy nilly. Especially somebody like Bootsy Crazy Self. Child, girl. God bless her. God bless her. Because she need help. She need help, child. Along with Fallon. Her and Fallon need to be locked away in the same padded cell, child. With the straight jackets on. Like they in the Fiend and Jodeci video. <laughs> Honey. Because both of them are nuts. Okay. Nuts. Now I don't know if y'all know or not. But maybe about. Six, seven, eight months ago. B. Simone and her best friend. Her best friend. Megan. Stopped being friends. Stopped their podcast and everything. It had made the blogs, it made its rounds. Um, I tuned into their YouTube show maybe once or twice. It was a little bit too deep and too sappy and it was crying every day. It was just too much for me personally, a little bit too draining for me. Um, but they had a great dynamic duo. You know, they had been friends for almost like 20 years or something like that. Her and Megan, and Megan had been her assistant, I believe, helping her with her career. Megan had recently gotten divorced, going through a lot of mental challenges and, you know, raising her children, one of whom I believe is autistic. Um, you know, B. Simone got her own issues going on with men and can't keep no man. Don't nobody want us. She want to be married. She want to be a mom and all of these different things. Well, their friendship ended, um... And that last episode of theirs, I actually did listen to some of it. And from what I got, it just seemed to me like B. Simone didn't really value the friendship as much as Megan did. I think that Megan thought that they were real, true, best friends, sisters, ride or for each other. And B. Simone looked at her more like a flunky, maybe a business opportunity somebody that she could take or leave um Megan came across like really trying to salvage their relationship work on their relationship and it was almost like she was crying out to be Simone like trying it was like a breakup like a, a breakup of a relationship you know what I'm saying like where one part party is like bleeding telling you like I love you I want to be with you like I want to work this out give me another chance like we can figure this out and the other person just like yeah no I'm I'm good no no sayonara it's a wrap and that's the energy that B Simone was giving off it was kind of cold to me considering how long they had been friends and everything there was really no concrete reason why their friendship was deteriorating breaking up um especially for B to Simone to just be like I would want rather keep a business relationship with you and not the friendship like what like how are we gonna continue to do business with each other and you don't even want to be friends with me like that's craziness craziness and I was talking to my actual best friend about this who we've been friends for over 30 years we've literally been friends since we were 10 years old we've been best friends now for going on 33 years and that's just like me being like yeah 
huh, sucks for you, don't want to be your friend anymore, but you know, you can still work for me, we can still work with each other, yeah, but this friendship, really not working out for me, not working out for my core, yeah, you disgust me, mm, yeah, don't want it anymore, you're a vampire, ew, like, it was like, what is going on here, and I really felt for Megan, I pray that she has a great career moving forward, I hope and pray that big things come her way because she's really good at speaking. I can really see her having her own talk show and really blowing up. And I pray that God really, truly blesses her with the desires of her heart. Um, and B. Simone, you know, she's had a lot of problematic moments throughout her career. But this one for me kind of like really solidified that she kind of like ain't ish. She kind of like a business naive. You know what I'm saying? It kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. And when I saw her teaser trailer for her own podcast that she has coming out this week, really kind of like stamped the nail on a coffin for me that she ain't, okay? And she's a mean girl and she's petty and ignorant. And yeah, check it out. B. Simone ends podcast with her best friend. B. Simone couldn't cancel herself any further in 2020. To be honest, y'all, I am glad the No For Sure podcast is over. B. Simone has been getting a ton of backlash all week over some of her comments in relation to the type of men she dates. But Me. now, people have a whole Me. new reason to slander the Me. IG media. We need to get in there. Like, right now, we need to go. Come on. What happened with No For Sure podcast? Be Simone, plagiarism. Tell us what happened. Do you have any original content? Some of her comments in relation to the type of men she dates. They're ready for you. You okay? How do you feel? I'm good. All right, five minutes. Okay. Yeah, I'm about to now. I'm a little nervous, but I'm ready. All right, I love you too. Tell her, fly it in. Thank you. Hey, good to see you. Quiet on set. What, hold on. Wait, what's going on with this? Sound speed. Camera yeah. speeding. Action. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. Podcast with your host, B. Simone, April 8th. Coming to a podcast platform near you. Resilience has never looked so good. Um, As you can see in her comment section, she wrote resilience has never looked so good. Let's try this again, April 8th. Um, Then you see Pretty V say, move that chair, please. I just felt like it was unnecessary for that chair part in the end. It was like a slap in the face to her friendship, their working relationship. It was just so unnecessary. And it's just like, stick a knife in her heart more, why don't you? Like, what was that for? Like, the commercial, this trailer was great. The production was great, the money that was spent, the camera work, she looks nice, she looks pretty, all of those things, A plus, you know? The point was made when you sat down in the chair for your own show, like you didn't even need to add that dig of, uh, what, what is this? Like what was the point of that? It's just like she comes across like she never gave a F about that girl. And that girl literally gave everything to her as a friend, as an assistant, as a business wife. It seemed like she forget for 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 went her own family and husband to help you with your career. And now it's just like you just like know her. And I'm like, pretty V, you need to hush. I was like, yeah, move that chair over. Um, you could be next. You could be next. You gotta pay attention to how folks treat other people. And uh Cause they will do the same thing to you. Like that was ignorant to me. That comment, like 
unless it's a lot that we don't know that Megan stole a dog, punched her in the forehead, stole money from her, after a man. I don't know. But, like, that would be the only thing that would make me be like, okay, I get it. But in that last conversation, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> in that last conversation between them, none of that was brought up. It didn't seem like anything detrimental happened. For her to just be so visceral and gutter snipe towards Megan. You know, like you got to be careful the energy you put out there in the world and how you do people. Because the same bridges you burn will be the same ones you got to walk right across of again. And she think because she's B Simone, you know what I'm saying, that. She's the bigger name. She she gonna go. Megan could be the one that could be the next Oprah. <laughs> you just never know. And then for you to have a platform now based on humanity and religion and you know feelings and all of these things and the suns, moons, the stars and crystals and all of this stuff. And for you to been raised in a religious household and for you to be acting like this and pretty V because she a church girl too. She a, like, huh? And y'all out here being messy like this. This was really, truly messy and nasty and dirty. And I most definitely won't be supporting. You ain't got to worry about me. Huh? <laughs> Okay, I ain't watched the last stuff. Like I said, it was too sad. Every day them heifers was crying. Like, what is going on? Do y'all just want to be sad and miserable? Like, what is happening here? My goodness. But this was trash. This was trash. It was unnecessary. Girl, you can lose yourself. Is it just me? Am I doing too much? Am I way too affected? Y'all let me know because I don't like this at all. I don't like it. And I'm I'm behind Megan tenfold. Like I'm wishing her the best of everything because she deserves it. She is a class act. And this is so trashy. Next up, we got Miley Cyrus, old trifling tail mama. You know, I came to you guys over a month ago letting you guys know that Miley Cyrus's mom, Tish Cyrus, recently married. Um, Dominic Purcell, who had previously dated her youngest daughter, Noah. Yeah, they had been having a schmectual relationship with one another. And somewhere in between that, Mama saw him and decided she wanted to hop on the D2. And then take it even further and marry him. And disinvite her daughter and son to the wedding. Miley didn't even know any of this was going on, that he had previously had a relationship with her little sister. The whole thing is just, what in the mama's family is going on with you trailer trash people? Like, this is beyond trifling. Like, what is going on with the world? Like, seriously. So, since news broke, the Jasmine brand reports that the socialite, okay, is in therapy with her new husband, Dominique Purcell, after the world found out he allegedly used to be romantically involved with her daughter, Noah. <laughs> A source familiar with the situation reportedly shared what's been going on in the aftermath of the Tish Cyrus, who is 56, Dominique Purcell, who is 54, and Noah Cyrus, who is 24 years old, scandal, stating about the couple, they're working on communication and sought therapy together. A second source reportedly added about the debacle. It pushed them away from one another, and it's going to take time to heal. You think? Ew. As we as we previously covered, Tish's alleged love triangle between her, her new husband, and the youngest daughter she shares with ex Billy Ray Cyrus caught media attention last month. Suspicions about Tish's strained relationship with Noah first sparked after many noticed the singer didn't partake in nor attend her mom's nuptials, which were held in her Grammy-winning sister Miley's backyard. Tish's other son. 
Brayson, Brazen, whatever, who was who she also shares with Billy Ray was also notably not in attendance, though her other two children from a previous relationship, Brandy and Trace, were. Months after the August 2023 wedding, reports began to surface that Noah wasn't in attendance because she wasn't speaking with her mom. Sources claim the mother-daughter duo have not shared a word since Tish began dating Purcell, despite knowing that Noah previously had a relationship with the actor. Neither Tish, Purcell, Molly, nor Noah have confirmed or denied the rumors. Sources have claimed, however, that Molly had no idea about the alleged relationship between her little sister and new stepdad. Somebody laid me over their shoulder and burnt me like I'm a child because I want to throw up like what kind of mother are you like i don't know if this lady going through a midlife crisis because she had been with billy ray pretty much her whole adult life and she wasn't able to be a hot girl now she's divorced and she out here in the world out here in the streets but girl what kind of mama f in behind her daughter <sighs> First of all, you need to be looking at his weird tale for even having a relationship with your 24-year-old daughter and he is good and well in his 50s and could literally be her daddy. And like I said in my previous video, this man know both of y'all smacks faces. He's experienced both of y'all orgasming. He knows how both of y'all but JJ's feel. Both of y'all probably didn't this man. He probably didn't went down on both of y'all. That is disgusting. And then because you knew you won ish and was trifling and disgusting for even entertaining, let alone marrying this man, you decide to shun your daughter and your son away because you knew they knew the truth and you didn't want it coming out and you was trying to save face. But I'm still side eyeing Molly because the day you have this wedding at my house and my sister and brother not there and what reason are you giving me for them not being there? What? They don't approve? Like, and then if even if that's the case, I'm picking up the phone like, what's the tea? Why y'all don't like this man? What's going on? So Molly, even if you didn't know, I'm still side eyeing you too. Because I'm not planning and throwing no wedding and my sister and my brother not there. That's weird. Like, even if they're able to get back on good terms, like that is, I'm just imagining Thanksgiving. Pass me the gravy. <laughs> Dad, who I've smashed. <laughs> like, we could never just sit down and be chill because it's always gonna be in my mind as my mama and me and this man and we all didn't experience each other in some type of way, like, And she's talking about some man therapy. Girl, you need shop therapy. Worst mother of the year. I want to know what Billy Ray got to say about all this. Where is Billy Ray in that mullet? Because I need him to strum on a guitar. Okay? And write a song about it. Okay? Because Tish, honey, you need to be in the padded cell with Fallon and with Boosie Stalker. <laughs> now it's all three of y'all in the padded cell. Where is Dr. Phil? Okay, nah, we don't need Dr. Phil. We need Judge Judy to come in there and cuss all of y'all out. Because all of y'all crazy. And he trifling too. He real trifling. Because how you go from smashing this young girl who you ain't got no business fooling around with, first of all, you creepster, to then being like, oh, what's good, moms? <laughs> what's good? Like, let me get on mama next. You don't think, like, that ain't disgusting to you? That he would even look your way knowing he didn't smash your daughter? Like, it's giving, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, oh, my God, I can't think of the word. Like, he preyed on them. Like, this is something he gets off on. Like, it's so weird. 
everybody just go in a corner and face the wall. Like, mm -mm, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, cannot. Nicki Minaj has been, has taken his updated Schmex Fender registry photograph. <laughs> So I wonder like what tour date they was on where he was like, oh, I got to head back because I got to go take my photograph for the registry. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to be back before you hit the stage. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I love you, boo-boo, but let me go in and take this photograph. Like, girl, put her in the cell right along with uh, Tish, Fallon, and Boosie Stalker. Now it's four of them in there because all of y'all need to be popped in the forehead. Like, ew. So the Jasmine brand says the husband of rap star Nicki Minaj <sighs> commemorated the end of his house arrest with a new photo on the Schmex Offender Registry. According to a report from Radar Online, Kenneth Petty was required to upload a new image for the watch list shortly after completing a house arrest sentence. The photo surfaced on California Schmex Offender Registry. Also referred to as the Megan's Law website, <laughs> which requires all convicted Schmex offenders to keep an updated image, home address, and summary of their crimes. Kenneth Petty, who turns 46 on Sunday, April 7th. Oh, he turned 46 tomorrow. Mm, posed for his new picture in a denim shirt with a white tank underneath. Under offenses it's noted that the husband of the rap superstar Nicki Minaj real name Onika Tanya Mirage Petty who is 41 was convicted of attempted rape by force or fear in case you're unfamiliar Kenneth Petty's conviction stems from a 1994 charge when a then 16 year old Jennifer Ho Hugh or Ho accused him of sexually ashmalting her at point at then a then 17-year-old Petty initially denied the allegations but ultimately accepted a deal and pleaded guilty to attempted rape, serving for years behind bars. The Only four? The incident has since followed him and has been a recurring headline topic since his 2019 marriage to Nicki Minaj. The couple also share a young son nicknamed Papa Bear, whom they welcomed in 2020. Other than a back and forth legal battle with Ho, who sued Minaj and Petty back in 2021 for harassment, claiming they offered her $500,000 to recant her statement about the attack. Petty has somewhat managed to stay clear of any more serious criminal trouble. First of all, why would you wear that denim shirt looking like you still in prison? Okay. I don't understand the attraction. He look like a rapist. Like he's not attractive at all. He look like a weirdo that pick young girls up after school in a big white van. Chester the Mul looking nigga. Like. He is not a, he looks scary to me. I just don't get it. All the men in the world that lady could have been with, and this is who she chose to not only lay down with, but birth a child with and marry. You had Nas before him. And not saying Nas is the end all be all, but how you go from Nas to a pedophile? You know, Nas has been accused of his own thing, so let me let me scratch him because he's been accused by Kalisa of some nasty stuff in the past. But just period. The choices. Choices are really important, people. <laughs> and people don't take that seriously. The choices make or break you in this life. And like, the... Uh, Fat boy, whatever, fat daddy, the baby name, he got to go to school one day. You know kids is about to be hurling that mess at that little boy. Y'all don't think about stuff like this. And look at him. He got a thin mustache. You can't trust nobody with no thin mustache like that. Disaster. He looks like a creep. Look 
at him. Let me log off because he he giving me mm -mm, he making my stomach hurt. No, 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 no. Once again, people, choices, 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 schmoices. Okay, choices. In some light, positive, happy news. Cash Doll is pregnant with her second baby. You know, she had a boy maybe about two years ago. Well, she is pregnant and she's expecting a girl. Let's take a look at the gender reveal. Oh, Can't play that song, but that is super cute. Go ahead on, Cash Doll. And she said, this is her last, honey. I don't blame her. So she got her boy and she got her girl. Oh, the wood are going to be cute. Her baby daddy cute. She look really pretty. Oh, I'm loving that. Congratulations to her. Hope she has a safe pregnancy. Yes, and a healthy baby girl. I can't wait to see what she's going to name her since her son's name is Cashton. Hmm, I wonder what she's going to name the girl. Cache? <laughs> I hope not. Oh, Lord, I hope not. I hope not. Oh, currency? Maybe? Currency? Huh? That's a, a coin? Coin? I like it. Raven Simone recently sat down and was interviewed and a comment that she made years ago came back up again about when she says that she's American. She ain't African-American. She's American. Okay. And she shares that her mama believes that Oprah Winfrey's reaction to her comment is what made it like blow up back then. But let's take a look at what she had to say about this situation now. You don't want to be labeled gay. I don't want to be labeled gay. I want to be labeled a human who loves humans. I'm tired of being labeled. I'm an American. Mm -hmm. I'm not an African American. I'm an American. Oh, girl, don't, don't set get up your Twitter. Now, when that aired, I felt like the entire internet exploded and threw my name in the garbage. There was so much backlash from my community and others that misunderstood slash didn't hear the exact words that I said. And the exact words that I said is that I'm an American, not an African American. I'm an American, mm -hmm. I'm not an African American, I'm an American. A lot of people on the internet thought I said that I wasn't black. And I never it's said a huge that. Difference. There's a difference between so being black and mean? African. When I say that African American does not align with me, that label, it doesn't mean that I'm negating my blackness or I'm not black. It means I am from this country. I was born here. My mom, my dad, my great, 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 great. And that's what I'm saying. The pure logistics of it. I understand my history. I understand where my ancestors come from. I also understand how much blood, sweat, and tears they've soaked into this earth in order to create the America that I live in today, free, happy, tax-paying American citizen. I also know that when I'm in another country, they don't say, hey, look at that African-American over there. They say, that's an American, plain and simple. So how does the public reaction feel now to you versus how it felt in 2014? In 2014, I felt attacked. I felt um, judged and not heard. Mm. Uh, but I also in the quiet of my own home, knew that there were other people in my position that have spoken out about it. I think you got so much backlash for that because people have come to use African-American and Black synonymously. I am an American. I am not first or second generation African-American. Stop mislabeling us. Now it feels like society has grown. There are more people that understand the root of what I'm talking about. And I think that the younger generation is starting to break down those barriers of labeling. So what y'all feel about that? As y'all ruminate, let me read what the Jasmine brand had to say. Um, 
The actress spoke about previously being criticized by the world for rejecting the label of African-American, expressing that she felt many misunderstood her perspective. raven Simone reflected on the topic while speaking to her wife, Miranda Pierman, Mayday, Mayday, whatever. On their podcast, Raven and Miranda, the celebrity stated that she wanted to share her refreshed thoughts about the situation as it was recently brought up on the Bill Maher show. The TV personality was reporting on actor Idris Elba criticizing the world for being hung up on race and claiming to no longer refer to himself as a black actor. Marr compared Elba's remark to similar comments Raven made during a 2014 interview with Oprah Winfrey. Yeah, so I didn't know that Idris Elba doesn't refer to himself as being a black actor. I mean, I get that. You're an actor. It shouldn't be a black actor or a white actor. We get that. But in the state of the world, when she said, when she go to another company, people don't be like, oh my God, that's an African-American. They're like, oh, that's an American. No, I think they say, oh, there's a black girl. <laughs> they also look at you as an American because you're from a different country. But oftentimes they, especially in some country, like you go to Tokyo or Japan or whatever, they be looking at black people like, oh my God, I ain't never seen one of you. They be looking at us like we're an avatar. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's unfortunate that we live in a world where race is such a big issue and a divider but that is the state of the world. When I go outside, people are not saying, oh my God, look at that American. People look at me and say, look at that black woman. It is what it is. And I don't have a problem with that. I, I, I get what she's saying with saying she's black. She's not African. She wasn't born in Africa. She's, you know, first world over here, whatever, whatever. Um, but... I don't negate my African heritage because it is there. I might not be uh, uh, attached to it, know much about it, but I respect my ancestors and everything that they had to go through to get me here. I love being black. Love it with every fiber of my being because we are the dopest of dopest of people we made this world what it is you know what i'm saying we are the first to step onto this soil period in life you know what i'm saying like being black even though it comes with its disadvantages and hardships we're fantastic mystical human beings and i wouldn't want to be any other race than what i am you know, and I will shout that to the moon, okay? You know, I get where Raven is coming from, but then I think that it is also coming from this privileged, sheltered world that she's lived in. You know what I'm saying? So I think there is a little bit of um, naivete there with her, you know? Because she hasn't experienced some of the things that everyday people have experienced. She's been famous her whole life. She's been catered to her whole life. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. I think that she loves being black, appreciates her blackness. But I do believe that there's some naivete in her statements. But I want to hear what y'all think about that. Do y'all agree with what she's saying? Do y'all, what do y'all think about Idris Elba not wanting to be, to, or wanting to prefer, or, refer refer to himself as a black actor let's talk about those things so today i did a whole video on the aoki lee scandal child if you want to call it a scandal it is a scandal um it got flagged so i'm waiting on a manual review of the video but um if you're wondering what her daddy is over in bali or wherever he's at doing <laughs> Let's just, let's just watch. Let's just take a look <laughs> at what Russell has been over there doing while he running from the popos. Work in. Work it. Oh, oh, okay, straighten your legs out. Roll the toes. Feet apart wide, wide, wide. Yes, relax everything. I got you. Let's go, let's go. He's working. 
<laughs> He's working. Work it. Oh my God. Okay, straighten your legs out. Go the toes. Feet apart wide, wide, wide. Yes, relax everything. I got you. Let go. Let go. Yo, I have seen some things in my day, but I have never seen a grown, middle-aged, older man, not even middle, he older, older man, get hoisted up in the air on another man's feet like he's a five-month-old baby. This look like a new way of foreplay. This look like he about to get this man some skullduggery, like... Why is your bald head resting in this man's pelvis? Why are you upside down touching your toes with your legs wide open, bouncing on another man's feet? I don't know what part of yoga this is, ma'am. And lastly, you guys, today, my girl... CC Sierra has come out with a new song, y'all. My girl has gone from being a hairstylist, lash technician, ghetto girls eat seasoning making. Now she's about to get in the med spa industry to now she is a rapper. Y'all blew up my DMs. Whew, I'm so proud of my girl. I'm so proud of my big sis. She did her big one. She did her big one with this one. Let's check out a snippet of her song. Oh, they watching, but can't copy me. My ass mad, and she ugly. She was never T. Mention big bad. Anytime you ever mention C. Mention big bad. Anytime you ever mention C. Now we finna shake. Finna shake. Yeah, shake song. I'm the Trini Toppy. Oh, they watching, but can't copy. Let's get a left this with me. I had to break on. It's too much money to be on hate and shit. Go make some. You be trying to f because I'm getting away from. Let's get a left this with me. I had to break on. It's too much money to be on. She said, Hey y'all, this is my first song, so it was fun for me. Just on some pretty girl fly ish. I'm a Gemini and I'm just living in my era of doing what I want. I'm a girl that has a lot of talents. I don't want to leave this world saying I ain't fulfill everything that I ever thought of. I'm just having fun with it. If it blows up, I'm going to be thankful to God, but I still have four other very successful companies. Yeah. <laughs> Sierra, why do you think this song is going to blow up? Girl, if you don't get somewhere, sit down. The bars were not barring, okay? You look cute. You know what I'm saying? It was giving hood fabulous, hood rich, but girl, this ain't going nowhere, okay? This ain't going nowhere. But I love the delusions of grandeur. My girl is delusional. She is the, the, the face of delusions. And I am here for it. I love it when he talk my own shit. You know, blah, blah, blah. And you know how I did this. How I did it. I don't have. Who has it with this? <laughs> we got to listen to it again. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's run it back. Oh, hey, it's going to make some. You be trying to. Come on, shake some. Let's get a left this with me. I had to break some. It's too much money to be on hate and shit. Go make some. You be trying to fuck I'm getting away from. Let's get I'm the trendy topic. All they watching, but can't copy me. My ass mad and she ugly. She was never T. Mention big bad. Anytime you ever mention C. Mention big bad. Anytime you ever mention C. Now we finna shake. Finna shake. Yeah, shake some. Are y'all downloading Shake Something from my girl CC? I'm about to go on title and find it right now. I believe in her. Number one on iTunes. 
Watch what I tell you. Watch what I tell you. Y'all make sure to thumbs up this video, like and subscribe, and hit that notification bell button. If you have not joined my Patreon, please do so. Tomorrow, my uncut cursing version of my Real Housewives of Potomac reunion part two and Summer House Martha Vineyards reviews will be up. You do not want to miss the uncensored version. We have a ball over there. And if you want to go to level two, the level two tier on my Patreon, you not only get my uncensored reviews, but you get my uncensored reaction videos. I just reacted to J. Cole's new song, Glorilla and Megan The Stallion's new video, the Real Housewives of New Jersey trailer. I'm about to watch... Uh, catch up on the episodes of BMF with you guys because I'm like a few episodes behind. So I'm going to watch it over there on Patreon so y'all can watch along with me. It's lit over there. I want to say thank you to everyone who has already joined my Patreon. We're over 300 members already. Like y'all have showed up and showed out for your girl and I cannot say thank you enough. Oh my God, I'm so thankful and grateful to God for you guys and y'all loving and supporting me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this Spill the Tea episode. I will see you guys next week for another one. See you on the next one. Bye.